G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, Teardown Time. And today we're tearing down my IBM RS6000 model 726H50 enterprise server. These were made between 1998 and 2000 for memory. Uh, they ran AIX 4.3 to 5.1. They had fast wide SCSIs, you could have up to 8 drives in it and they were an enterprise server they also weigh a fucking ton they are stupidly heavy even with the power supplies out they weigh a ton and so in order to get this on the mobile workbench to do a proper teardown of it completely we're gonna have to tear it down down here before I get it onto the mobile workbench this was a 4A for power PC enterprise type uh, servers for myself they are um, mine ran power PC 604 E's at about 330 odd megahertz and uh, they could be stocked with up to 3 gig of RAM per server so what we're going to do is we're going to start to tear it down in the cabinet uh, and then we're going to get what we can up onto the mobile workbench for a continued teardown. So this might be done in a few bits, this video. Let's get into the top of it. Except I've bought the wrong screwdriver. Hang on. Right. Instead of looking for a screwdriver, found the power drive. So let's get these screws out. Probably a bit of overkill using the power drive. We'll also take a look at, in this uh, video as well, the SSA cards that uh, I've spoken to you about. I'm going to try and get this up again. Uh, how does it come up again? It should just lift... Oh, I see. Okay, so in the top, we've got our two hot swap blowers. Now these come out pretty easily. You simply just pull them out like that. Oy. They were hot swappable. As you can see, it's pretty pretty bare at the front okay here's the drive bay and to get the drives out was pretty easy if I can remember how to do it I think that's locked isn't it yep these are the drives I need to connect there so they've got a LVD 68 pin to standard SCSI 320 meg interface. And there they are there. So you can have up to, what was it, one, two, three, four, five, six drives, uh, 12 drives in each server. And you could get the drives up to, for memory, I think it was capable of handling 36 gig hard drives. And they were expensive back then. We have our reset button, our power light, our post display. So this tells you where it is in the boot up process. Floppy and a, a CD optical drive, that one. All right. the rest of the front of the unit off also we have our status lights to tell you where it is in the boot process okay it should just come out which it does and you'll see the interface there And uh, I'll get the plug out and we'll have a look at the optical drive. Well, there's the optical drive. 68 pin unit. 
made by Plexdoor, October 1998. She's an old one. Okay, so we'll now get the floppy disk out. I don't think we'll bother salvaging the floppy disk. I've got plenty of floppy disk drive spare. Right. Now, does that? Yes, it does. So if we get this out, there's the. Uh, you could move that away and fit another hard drive in there or something if you wish. There's the diagnostics display. Oh, so we do have ah we do have another hard drive in here. Look at that. I wonder why I had that there. I'm gonna put the camera down. Hang on. That's a bit of a stroke of luck. Look at that. 36 gig 68 pin LVDSC drive there, so that's all right. So there's the inside of that all that area As You can see here It's all one Almost all one loom really isn't it? Okay What I think we'll do now is just drag the whole thing onto the ground and then I'll uh, Try and see if I can lift it out so bear with me. So we've got it out of the cabinet. So this is the back of it. We have serial, uh, we have um, parallel, uh, DB9s. We have PS2 keyboard and mouse. Now, by default, you, I believe you could get a graphics card for this, but it had to be IBM approved, and I believe it was very similar to a Sun frame buffer for memory. I didn't use it with a uh, VGA card. I did everything through AIX's terminal. Um, I can't remember whether or not you could put Sunos on these or Solaris. I'm, I vaguely remember somewhere reading that some IBM power systems could run Solaris, but I may be wrong. Plenty of room for expansion, as you can see. And you'll notice that the cooling fan is on the outside. We'll have a look at that one. This would be where your two power supplies would go. So if we get in and have a look, we'll take the top off it. Okay, so then we need to undo this tray. Now this tray just acts as a baffle um, for the airflow for the front units. So that's all this is, it's just a air baffle. You see there, it's just an air baffle. And we're in. Now, what I will say is that the CPU and the memory uh, boards are modular. They are removable, hot swap, and expandable. That just broke. That's all right. We don't care about that. Um, I guess the biggest thing with... Uh, with these computers was their power. They were an extremely powerful computer and the expandability of them. And as I said, mine had four 332 megahertz um, I thought this might happen. It doesn't want to come out. There it goes. So what we might do is take each component over to have a look at it on the bench. Hmm. 
Hang on. Okay, a bit of brute force and uh, verbal persuasion. But the round board's out. Now, my, my RS6000 had 128, so we've got 256, 512, Uh, now, I've got to remember how much RAM was in this. We've got there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, it's about one and a half gig per board. I had three gig in this. Three gig is what I had. They are interleaved for memory. We'll take out one of the RAM sticks and have a look at it. Pop straight up. There it is there. 128 meg. I must have had, yeah, one and a half gig on uh, each memory CPU. You can see there, they're a DOM and back PCB. Revision 2.4. Have a look at the back of it. We've got the memory controller there. I think for memory that is. For those that like the details, there it is there. As I said, they were a very powerful server. So the memory boards look the same. You can see the uh, style of RAM it takes. It almost looks... I, can't, I think that's SRAM. I don't even think it's DRAM. I think it's SRAM for memory. What is it? Uh... I think it is 3.3 volt. I think it might be SRAM. Someone will tell me. I'll lose track of all the types of RAM there are around. So there's the uh, memory board. Gone. Nothing worth salvaging out of that. All right. So next up, let's have a look at the uh, CPUs. You can see here just some air baffles which as you can see fold into here and the air blows down and through these air buffle baffles across the CPUs put them in the bin as I said I had four I think mine are 333 meg I could be wrong but I think for memory that's what they were and we'll uh, now this is the this is the cross talk. This is how you link the two CPUs together. Sort of like uh, what do they call it? AMD. What is it? Uh, Crossfire and um, Nvidia's SLI. I guess you could look at it that way. So this they're the CPU boards which we'll tear down shortly. Got some voltage regulation there. There's the uh, dual interconnect. We'll get this one out as well. And we'll have a look at these in part two of this teardown. So if we just we've got to be really careful with this sort of stuff because as with most of IBM's cabinets they are extremely bloody sharp okay what's stopping oh no oh yes hang on it's not the interconnect i apologize for that that's my uh failure that's the uh the boot count process for the front display to uh tell you where the system's up to my apologies i got that wrong Got it. And that's the front control panel system. Thought that was the interlink between the two. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it's not the interlink, it's the uh, front control panel. I'll tell you where it's up to. You can see the wires are pretty rock solid for ribbon lead. There's no flexibility in them. They're pretty solid pieces of uh, copper in there. 
So, while we've got it here, let's have a look at the motherboard. So we have our SCSI interface. And you'll notice that this one cable feeds the whole front. So the back plane, the, the CD-ROM, the whole lot is on one SCSI interconnect. Now, now this is interesting. Oh no, here it is over here. <laughs> okay. Let's get, there's the uh, floppy front panel. If we have a look at the um, expansion bus, we have PCI-X, a pile of PCI, ISA, no, ESA. I think that's ESA. Another PCI and another ESA. Now, you could have this and this, or this and this, but you could not have all three. You'll notice there's only two spots. So you could have this, this, or sorry, this and this, or this and this, but you could not have all three. That's right. You'll notice something here, and I, I'll tell you what it is. This is the interconnect bus between the PCI board and the CPU board. Got some ASICs under there. It's individual construction, so that if your PCI board shat itself, you just replace this. If your CPU system shat itself, you just replace this. You're not having to buy the whole thing, even though, being from IBM, it would have been stinkingly expensive. This here is the DB9 backplane, which is here, as well as the DB25. Right, so, we have, um, you'll notice how the battery sits in, we'll get to that later. Alright, so the next thing to do would be to pull off more plugs. Except they're not going to come out really easy, are they? Oh, I see they're clipped. Okay. We've got another SCSI plug. I'll just be able to see it there. Uh, where is it? Just here. And another SCSI plug there for an external SCSI connection. If we have a look at the... Uh, CPU bus and for memory that's power for the CPU boards there and that's data I could be wrong alright so what I think we'll do now is get the two motherboards out and we'll have a look at the motherboards